Greetings, friends. At the end of part one, I promised to tell you about Queen Marika's grand betrayal. So, I started bringing all the details together, and I felt like I bit off more than I could chew, because I could explain and prove so much, but I could not find the answers to several very important whys. So, I took my time and went on a new trip through the lands between, searching for clues, searching for facts, searching for answers. And here I am, presenting you with what I have found. Major spoilers ahead, of course. To understand the end, we must start at the beginning. The beginning of the Golden Order. The Elden Beast was sent to the lands between by the Crater Will. It eventually became the Elden Ring, source of the Earth Tree. However, the Greater Will was not the first of the Outer Gods to try to lay claim to the Lands Between. In the beginning, everything was in opposition to the Earth Tree, but through countless victories in war, it became the embodiment of order. Queen Marika and her Elden Lord Godfrey waged wars against other powers in the Lands Between. In Marika's own words, Hark, brave warriors. Hark, my Lord Godfrey. We commend your deeds. Guidance hath delivered ye through each ordeal to the place ye stand. Put the giants to the sword and confine the flame atop the mount. Let a new epoch begin, an epoch glistening with life. Brandish the Elden Ring for the age of the Erd Tree. Among their other victories, they sealed the Rune of Death thus disempowering the gloam-eyed queen who was a competing Empyrean and rendering themselves and the Earth Tree immortal. And with that, the eternal, unshaking Golden Order has been established. This immortality, however, was selective or limited to the elite, for we know that upon death, souls would return to the roots of the Earth Tree. Time passed, and blessings of the Earth Tree were no longer as plentiful as they once used to be. And so, it was time to leave faith behind and strive for understanding. Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? I declare mine intent to search the depths of the Golden Order through understanding of the proper way. Our faith, our grace, is increased. Those blissful early days of blind belief are long past. My comrades, why must ye falter? Perhaps this is how fundamentalism was established, with its laws of regression and causality. However, that was the last time Queen Marika would speak in favor of the Golden Order, for in her search for understanding, she discovered something fearsome. Something that required the Golden Order to be destroyed and replaced, once and for all. In the previous video, I claimed that it was the Golden Order that took away the light of grace from Godfrey and the Tarnished. I was wrong. It was Marika herself. Very well. In Marika's own words, my lord and thy warriors, I divest each of thee of thy grace. With thine eyes dimmed, ye will be driven from the lands between. Ye will wage war in a land afar, where ye will live and die. In Marika's own words, then, after thy death, I will give back what I once claimed, return to the lands between, wage war and brandish the Elden Ring. Grow strong in the face of death. Warriors of my lord, Lord Godfrey. She took the grace away from the Tarnished and sent them off to faraway lands to someday be called again by the guidance of grace. The next step in her betrayal would be the Knight of the Black Knives. I believe it was Marika who conspired with Rani telling her where to find destined death. There is two reasons for which I believe that. First, remembrance of the Black Blade tells us 
Marika's sole need of her shadow was a vessel to lock away destined death. Even then, she betrayed him. To me, this betrayed reads as betrayed the purpose that she herself gave him. Black knife armor description is the second reason. The assassins that carried out the deeds of the Knight of the Black Knives were all women and rumored to be Numen, who had close ties with Marika herself. And so, on the Knight of the Black Knives, two demigods died. Godwin became the Prince of Death, creating those who live in death. Their souls would no longer return to the Earth Tree when they died, cutting its sustenance and creating a new adversary for the Golden Order to face. And Rani started her own path of freeing herself from her two fingers and, one day, establishing her own order in this world. I really like how the very first thing we see in the game is Queen Marika shattering the Elden Ring, and how the second thing we see is Lord Radagon trying to fix it. It is a widely discussed question whether Radagon was part of Marika from the very start. I like the idea that Radagon was joined with Marika as a means to keep her in check. After all, he was loyal to the Golden Order to the very end. However, I found this little piece of dialogue in my travels. In Marika's own words, O oh Radigan, leal hound of the Golden Order, thou art yet to become me. Thou art yet to become a god. Let us be shattered, both mine other self. If we take my other half as proof that Radagon was split from Marika to later be rejoined, the question is, why would she split herself? My best assumption is to give birth to Rani, for her Order of the Dark Moon to one day challenge the Golden Order. Now, there is another key figure in this whole scheme, Melina. I believe she was born before the shattering happened. She was born as Queen Marika's daughter, she was granted purpose, and she was burned. We can still see the burn marks on her skin, for she was born to be a kindling maiden, to set the earth tree on fire when the time came. And so, the Elden Ring was shattered, the lands between were plunged into a war between demigods, while Empyreans and outer gods were making their moves to establish their own orders. The Earth Tree too was affected by the shattering, for now its seeds scattered across the various lands, as if life itself knew that its end has come. But why, Marika? Why would you do this? Why would you destroy the very golden order you worked so hard to establish? No matter where I looked, I could not find a single line of text that would tell us why she did that. However, then I recalled the sea. Can you see? All these mature golden earth trees prospering in other worlds. I believe this is what Queen Marika saw, understood and learned to fear. Removing the rune of death from the order to keep herself and the tree eternal. Feeding the earth tree with souls of her people turning the lands between into yet another world, serving as an eternal source of power for the greater will. Marika realized that this was a mistake, and so she did all she could to break the Golden Order from the inside, to save the lands between from it, perhaps to try and stop its crusade across the universe. She sent the Tarnished away, to later return and claim the Elden Ring, for she knew that to do that, the Earth Tree would have to be burned. She orchestrated the Knight of the Black Knives, creating adversaries for the Golden Order and weakening the Earth Tree. She shattered the Elden Ring and was sealed to pay for her sins. And now, there is one final piece of the puzzle that remains, the one that has the fewest answers to, the Thorn in Marika's body. The color seems different from the fragments of the Elden Ring she is crucified on. The closest match I could find 
is the Rune of Death, its colors ranging between black and shades of red. The match is not perfect, I admit, but isn't that the best fit? For nothing but destined death should be able to slay a god. However, I do not think this thorn was meant for Marika. I think it was meant to slay the Elden Beast itself, for Marika is the host to the Elden Ring, which is what the Elden Beast eventually became. If you look at the beast's belly, you will see a crack at the same spot as where Queen Marika was stabbed. But who and when could have done it? I don't think it could be Gideon the All-Knowing or Lord Godfrey, who seemed to be the first to reach the Earth Tree after we burned away the thorns. I think this happened after Queen Marika was crucified, but before the thorns appeared. After all, images of a crucified queen are all over the lands between, meaning her crucifixion was public knowledge. She was seen like that. However, those images lack the thorn, which means the attack happened at some point after the crucifixion. Once again, I do not have a better origin for the stone than the destined death itself. And conveniently, there is a single black knife assassin in front of the queen's bedchamber. And we know that black knife's assassin's daggers were infused with the rune of death. This is an instance of the rune of death right next to queen Marika. Perhaps this was the culmination of the plot of the Knight of the Black Knives. Perhaps, some time after the Shattering, the Assassins made their way to Queen Marika. Perhaps, she chose to be killed, hoping to die, and taking what remained of the Elden Beast with her. This is a lot of speculation, but the facts remain. The thorn stuck in Queen Marika's body, and the wound she seems to share with the Elden Beast. Both of them survived, and so it was up to us to come and finish the job. This is, of course, a theory, a mixture of facts and speculations, a search for truth in the convoluted events that transpired in the lands between. Hope you enjoyed this one. My next video shall probably be about the two fingers and the power of runes. I may or may not make a few shorter lore videos before that comes out. Regardless, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.